I'm getting quite into these sculptural pieces and this is Greenheart. Never turn Greenheart. It is incredibly weighty. It's got a lot of surface cracks across the top, but looking down the ends, which I can't show you now because it's really heavy, um, they are fairly surface deep. So I think I'll cut stroke plane a lot of those off during the process in a moment. I've also got another this bit, piece of this wood that I can't pronounce the name of. Uh, I don't know, I'm not even gonna try. There it is on the screen. And with this sap wood, it's gonna be interesting. Again, got another crack across here, which is fairly surface deep as well. So I think I'm gonna split this along the middle and then I'm doing another segmented ring, but with a slight difference of one wood one side, the light wood, another wood the other side, separated by split pieces of the light and the dark wood, so that one side of the ring will be very light coloured wood with dark separators, the other side will be all dark with light separators. Let's get this cut up, run through the planer. I'm just going to take this sort of size piece off of it, then trim it all up and glue it together. Yay! So a very dark brown and a yellowy green, the green heart. I've just cut those on the table saw. You can see some saw marks here a little bit uh, and obviously here, but a couple of thin, a couple of thin layers of glue. I always overkill on the glue, as you know, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. It'll all squeeze out. I've got a drip tray at the bottom. Spread that evenly along that. Sandwich. That's glued really nicely. Not one little gap that I can see at the moment. And I've run it through the plane. I just get rid of any glue, excess glue on top. So I've got a nice even surface to run through the saw blade. All cut to length. Got some separators as well. All cut at the right angles, 15 degrees. Although it's a very straight grain, I wanted to keep the flow of grain in each half. Just, just the little things, please little minds and all that. The separators I'm gonna flip round the other way. I've, I've put it all together and I'll show you. That should make a circle. And then, ka -ching! You got the opposite on the other side. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. I love it, that works. One important aspect of this is half this ring is gonna be separate from the other half. And the way I want them mounted is at an angle. Now, you can see the fatter ones here. This is one half, this is the other half, and that will be cut in half. But the way I want to mount it is not on straight rods for each one, they have straight rods holding that up. I'd like them a bit arty and the rods off to one side. Now, how to do that? It's quite simple, really. All I need to do is mount this on a bit of board that's got a nice straight edge. So with that flat on the bottom of the drill stand, I can drill down here and drill down here. I'll measure it all up properly later. And then move the whole thing over, drill down here and drill down here. Then, see the half ring? The rods will be off at an angle. And the rods will be off at an angle there as well. Before I drill it though, before I get it all glued up onto that back piece, I need to glue the whole thing together and then glue it on the backboard. Well, the drilling happened. I did remember before I trimmed it down to leave that bit flat and it sat perfectly on the bottom. I drilled down, ta-da, ta-da, nice and straight, and moved it over a little bit and drilled down straight as well. Yay! So, when I cut that, and I mount it, then all the rods will be off at one angle. All I then need to do is figure out the exact angle here and replicate it in the base. Easy, right? Yeah, I think so. Let's make that round.
Oh, close enough. That's round. Not many gap issues here at all that I can see at this moment in time, which is great news. My next job is to at least start a dip down in the middle. Then I'll bring this down once I'm happy with that dip down. All right, that's the best I can do for view angle for you. That's pretty damn close to exactly what I want. I'm not gonna push that any further. What I'm gonna do now is come from this way, see if I can get a cleaner cut, because this is not clean. Come from this way outwards to bring that in a lot closer and come to almost, almost the edge of that. Question is, how close do I want to get to that? And do I want to hollow that out a bit more? Now I can see it a little bit better, but I'm a bit closer. This side isn't quite as round as that side. So yeah, let's get the tool back in there, I think. Bit more bowl gouge usage. Get this down. I don't know, really. I'm, I'm still debating that. Do I want a sharp crisp edge against that U with the risk of damaging it when I'm sanding and, and, and cutting close to it? It's got a lovely shape there at the moment. Or do I leave it with a little bit? I've sealed these up with super glue and dust. The worst one being here. Got a bit of work to do on the inside with a, a little gap there. I'm gonna sand this now. I'm gonna get the flat wheel out on the drill to get this smooth. And I'll come back to you when I'm shoving some sand and sealer on. When I turn it round to do the other side, I reckon that side is gonna be virtually like butter, despite these separators the majority of the green heart is just gonna oh, just judging by what this was like to cut butter looking forward to that finished a 320 grit i filled successfully all the cracks with glue and dust i think i did a pretty fine job to be honest uh there is just grain that i'll fill with sand and cedar in a moment and the worst of them let me just find it i'll find it when i'm sand and seeing as i go around Right, let's shove some sand and cedar on there. Those colours kind of work. Kind of greeny yellow, or just, yeah, and a, the brown. I quite like it. I was a bit hesitant at first, but they're the right size pieces of wood for the job I wanted to do. There's the fat one I'm gonna cut in half. There's the big, big gap. And you can see the very dark dust I put in there, which was just some of this as dust, but it's come up very dark with the super glue, unfortunately. But Salavi, we are where we are and all that. All right, let's have a look at the front face. I'll sand the U in the middle, very last job, when it's on the button jaws. Joins on the side here. I'm very pleased with in the end. Nearly got me in the face. Fortunately, I was wearing a face shield, although it didn't hit the face shield. By comparison to the other side, this is like butter. It's absolutely lovely to turn. I'm going to turn some more of this green heart with something else. Gorgeous stuff. Okay, I think we're good on shaping. Sanded to 320 grit got the Yorkshire grits to go but let's have a look at this wood with some sand of cedar on it I've said it before I'll say it again it's the first indication of what the finished thing is going to look like when you put the sand of cedar on and it is my favorite bit I haven't said that for a while I don't think so I think I could be forgiven get that right in the grain give it a good chance to dry afterwards probably give it 
I technically I think it's 10 15 minutes for the shellac sander sealer but half an hour maybe I give it because I've usually put a reasonably thick coat on there and it did make sense to keep these in order because look you've got this black line that runs around starts from this side it's lovely and dark up here but at least it's continuous There you go, some nice simple guidelines. And there it is. Very happy with the finish on that. Now to cut it in half. Yay. Okay, so I've finished the ends, just giving them a quick, and I've worked out my positioning. Now, I would like that distance and that distance and that distance all to be the same. So I've roughly found that. I've marked an even distance from this side, so that the base is slightly wider, so that someone puts it in against the bookshelf or something like that, they're not going to bash this or this. So there's a little bit of room, eight mil here and about eight mil here. Now for the base, I've used some of the other section of green heart. Got a lovely black dot in this side and a smaller black long run there. I think I'm gonna use this side as the top. So I've got to finish all of that. Also got to drill it. This is the most challenge, well not challenging bit, but got to get it right. All right, that's all the rods trimmed to length. This one's a little bit loose, but I'm gonna glue that one in. I've sanded this to 400 grit, sander sealed it, and then rubbed the sander sealer off. Only thing left to do on that is wax it. Should I wax it before I put the rods in? Yeah, probably better to do that. Two secs. Ta-da, waxed. Lovely. Those holes are all drilled at the same angle as that, which means everything should be straight and as I want it. One other thing I need to do is put my stamp on the bottom and the piece number. Let me find something to put this on, hang on. Four little rubber feet. And now all that's left to do is poke those, glue those into those holes. So next time you're gonna see it is now when it's being gilded and then the final pretty pictures. This is the last one of these I'm gonna be doing for a while. I'm going to step back more into creative other things, I think, because I've made quite a few of these sculptural type things recently. Um, unless you tell me to the contrary, then I'll carry on doing these. But, you know, we'll see.